how a how a how a killer teddy bear almost took out the human race. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? Listen, I know how absurd that sounds, but I promise you I'm not high. I'm just coming back with another manga review. A manga by none other than Naoki Yorosawa. And before we get into the video, just make sure you drop a like, make sure you drop a sub, and make sure you drop a comment. It really does help out the channel. It helped me grow the channel and just encourage me to keep making content. Now, Naoki Yorosawa is known for a lot of his great works, like Monster, which a lot of people consider to be a perfect work, myself included. That's my favorite manga of all time. I consider it a 10 out of 10. And I made a video right here if you want to know about that series. He also made series like 20th Century Boys, which I consider a great series. I didn't like the ending too much. And then he has an ongoing series right now called Asadora. And he has a couple other series that haven't been translated to English just yet. But the manga we're talking about today is a manga about a robotic revolution in a sense. This manga is called Pluto. And it's actually a remake of a storyline written by Osama Tezuka, the mangaka of Astro Boy. See, there was a storyline in Astro Boy about this robot that wanted to be the greatest robot ever. And he proved this by destroying the seven great robots in the whole entire world. At the time that this storyline was coming out, it was extremely popular and it had a lot of viewers actually reading this storyline because it was something different from the usual happy go nature of Astro Boy. And one of the fans of this storyline would be Naoki Yorosawa, which is why he wanted to remix this story and create it himself. So Yorosawa's version focuses way more on the questions of life. And I think the perfect case study for these questions in this manga is Abula. Also, just a warning because I'm about to spoil a lot for the story. So if you want to read this story, you might want to exit out. I don't know if you like spoilers or not. But back to what I was saying. We're introduced to Abula all throughout the story. And we don't know whether he's human or robot. Well, he says that he is human. But when you, we have robots like astro boy who is reading him detecting him it's not getting a clear signal on whether he's human or robot but he says that he's a cyborg later on in the story we learn that the actual abula was fighting in the war and his whole entire family died and he died himself before he was dying though he had commissioned a great scientist to make a robot for him he wanted to make the robot the best robot ever created. The only problem is to do this, they had to upload over 6 billion profiles to this robot. This robot having so many profiles to go through takes so long to wake up that he would be in an eternal slumber. And the only way to rate this robot up would be to introduce an emotional bias towards hatred, sadness, etc. And so, once Abula dies, this robot is made, but he is sleeping. But what the doctor does, Dr. Tema, that was working on the robot, he uploads the consciousness of Abula into this robot. And Abula is able to wake up because he gained that bias of hatred and sadness. And this is where the question of whether a robot can really be human comes in. Because when this robot wakes up, this robot actually believes that he is the real Abula. He doesn't know he's a cyborg. He doesn't know that he's actually a robot. He doesn't know that he doesn't have a brain. He had his AI uploaded to him. So he's able to lie to himself. Dr. Tema even says that people think that robots can't lie, but you're lying to yourself because you are not the actual Dr. Abula. And once Dr. Abula realizes this, he freaks out and he kind of just self explodes. And it's kind of crazy because in this whole story, the whole point is to say that robots are human. They cry just like us. They grieve just like us. They're sad just like us. They're happy just like us. They want to have kids just like us. They're always comparing these robots to us. And it's funny because throughout the whole entire story, we see that people are 
kind of annoyed by robots saying, oh, you're pretend crying. You don't actually feel this. You're not actually human. But throughout this whole story, we see these robots have these eternal dialogues with themselves saying, is this how humans feel when their child dies? Is this how human feels when they're grieving? That question right there is proof of life. That's the question yourself saying, is this how they feel? It's showing empathy and that's showing feeling. That's showing something only humans can show. And that's how we get to the teddy bear. The teddy bear is a supercomputer created by the United States. This computer is used for war, it's used to ask questions, etc. But this computer is too smart. It brings up the question of should we make something that's way smarter than us that we cannot control? And this computer ultimately has an ulterior motive. You see, his whole entire plan was to get the earth to be destroyed. What he wanted to do is to blow up this volcano in this park. And how he had to do that was to get Abula to make a robot that will actually go down there and activate the volcano with an anti-photon bomb and blow up basically the universe and just destroying all the humans and only leaving the robots left. You see, this robot believed that they were the superior make of humans. He believed that they surpassed humans. And this robot is showing evidence of being human. He's acting out on his own. He has his own motives, his own thoughts. Nothing's controlling him. He has the ability to kill. He has the ability to think for himself. This robot's no longer controlled by the system because it evolved so quickly. This whole series brings up the question of, should we continue advancing in technology, advancing in these sectors that can quite possibly destroy us? You see, because the end goal of this teddy bear was to enslave all the humans left after this bomb. And that's a very scary thought. The thought that humans are just so despicable to any type of organism that they hate them. The question this series brings up is not only a question of should robots even be creative? It's more of a question of do we deserve robots? Can we actually manage it? Or will man alter these robots and make these robots hate them? It's more of a question of humanity, that humanity is evil. Humanity has this deposition to do bad things. I'm a great fan of this series of Pluto. I definitely recommend it to anybody who's trying to read a sci-fi story that's going to get you thinking. Um, It's not my favorite Naoki Yorosawa work, as I said earlier, Monster is. But I would definitely give this probably an 8 out of 10. I would say it's... The story is a little bit more concise and better than 20th Century Boys, but 20th Century Boys is more enjoyable to read, if that makes sense. But I really do highly recommend this series. I recommend anything Naoki Urasawa has written. And remember guys, drop a sub, drop a comment, let me know what you want the next video to be. It'll probably be a One Piece video, but I'm not sure just yet, so don't hold me to it. And I'm sorry for the wait. Between this video and my last video, I had school and finals. I've been very busy, but I'm on Chris's break now. So these videos are going to start pumping out again. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.